All right, hey, welcome back to chapter 13. You've done it. Wow, you have shown up for chapter 13. I want to give you an award. Oh man, you're awesome. You're here. Uh, what can I give you? Oh, you know what? How about this? I've got a great picture here. Just because you showed up today, I want to give you that picture as a reward. Wow, well, that sounds kind of stupid, doesn't it? All you've done is what you've committed to do. You've shown up to watch a video and hopefully to read the book as well. But that's what we do for people. In particular, our children in, in the last few years. We give them trophies, we give them ribbons just for participating in a sport or an activity. We don't want people to lose. We don't want our children to learn what it means to lose and so we don't have them fail. They get a ribbon just for showing up so that they don't feel bad. And the problem is they go home knowing that they didn't deserve the ribbon, that it really doesn't mean anything. Children aren't stupid. They understand that if they get a, an award, it's a trophy, a ribbon, whatever it might be, for doing nothing, there's no value attached to it. There's no purpose to that trophy. There's no purpose to the award that they've been given. They haven't done anything that deserves it. What we need to do for people is to give them a, a real purpose for doing what they do. Here's what I mean. They need a reason to, to do the hard stuff. They need a reason why what they're doing matters. People want to feel like what they're doing actually matters. There's a, an experiment that was done a few years ago. And what they did is they put a rat, a live rat, in a pail of, or a container of water. It was a, a large container of water. And they turned the lights out. And the water was too deep for the rat to reach the bottom. And so it had a, it had a paddle to keep its head above water. Because if it didn't, it would, it would sink and the water would rise and it would drown. So what happened is the rat would paddle like crazy. They could hear it going and they could see it in with the night vision stuff. But the rat had no clue that there was anybody there, that there was anything there. There was no light. And so what they found is after an hour or so, the rat eventually gave up and lost hope and stopped paddling. And what happened is the water rose and it drowned. The rat died. Well, they tried the same exact experiment, except they changed one variable. They took a small pen light and put it across the room, just giving a small glimpse of light to that rat. And what they found is instead of giving up in, in one hour, the rat paddled and paddled and paddled and paddled for just about 36 hours before it finally ran out of steam. And they pulled it out and it was okay. But what's the difference? That's the important question and also answer we want to get at today. The second rat had something to focus on. It had hope. It had a reason to keep paddling. If it didn't have a reason, it quit. The first rat, it was totally dark. It couldn't see that there was any kind of hope, any kind of end in sight. There was no reason to keep paddling away, and so it stopped. The second one, however, had that hope. It had a reason, and that's what we need to be able to give to the people we lead. Why should they want to go above and beyond? Why does what they do actually matter? And this is a crucial thing not to just ask. There's lots of questions out there, but there's less people who have good answers. Why do you matter? Why does your company matter? Why does your organization matter? Why does your crew matter? Now be honest. Don't just give a glib answer or a short, quick answer, but come up with a real answer. Why do you matter? I was meeting with a group of uh, men and women from a body shop, and I asked them this question, why do you matter? Why does what you do make a difference? Well, it provides jobs and we fix vehicles. And that's where they left it. And I said, okay, let's push into this a little bit deeper. Let's, let's make you think about this a bit in a di bit different way. And that's what I want to do for you today as well. How about this? When someone enters a body shop, they've had an accident, they're stressed, they're not sure when they're going to get their car back, if they're going to get it back, how much it's going to cost them, whether they're going to get a, a loaner vehicle or whether they're going to have to pay for it. And they're dealing with insurance, they're dealing with all kinds of stories and maybe experiences with shady body shops. And you don't know what's going through their minds, but they're stressed. Guarantee it. Maybe they don't like driving to begin with, and they had an accident, and that just compounds the problem. 
Well, okay, they come into your front door of your business, and what's your purpose? Is it just to fix their car? Well, anybody can do that. Oh, we fix it right. We have the best quality. It's good as new. Everybody says that. What makes you different? And this is where I took them. I said, okay, look at it this way. If you can lower their stress level by greeting them in a friendly way right from the first step they, c they make into your building, how can we help you, ma'am? What can we do to help you today? How, what's, what's the problem? And then listen to what they're saying, listen to their concerns, and then go look at the vehicle with them. And all through the process, explaining to them the first time what's going to happen, how to approach insurance, what you're going to handle for them and what you're not, and how they could handle the different areas of responsibility for them, like with insurance and so on. Um, but just make it clear for them. Give them some ideas. Offer to help them if their vehicle is staying. Offer them a ride home or to wherever they need to go. If they're wondering about a loaner, do you have a loaner that you can give them? Is there a cost associated with it? If not, can you help them with a rental vehicle? Why not? Why not try to make the process as smooth as possible for them? Make their experience with you and your company as good as possible. And then you fix it right. And you let them know how it's coming. You don't wait three weeks until you, the car has been in there for three weeks and they're needing to get to work and they're getting frustrated and they call and then finally you reply to their phone calls. Why don't you call them regularly? And let them know, hey, we're just waiting for this part. These have come, but we're waiting for this. And it's on back order. So it, it is, is a, this is the timeline we're expecting. There's no surprises for them. The, you're in touch with them. You're in contact with them. You're trying to make the experience a positive one for them. And then everything comes and you fix it. And it's painted and it looks great. And then it's cleaned. Just before they get into it, the exterior is clean, the interior is cleaned. And you put something inside that makes it smell good. So when they come, you show them where you fi what you fixed. You don't try to hide it. Um, some places do this, but you don't do that. You show them exactly what you fixed and how it looks now. And then you give them the keys. And you've got all the paperwork done for them. All they need to do is sign. It's easy. What your purpose is, is to reduce the stress on, in the lives of people who have been involved in an accident and make the process, the process and, the, and their experience with you as positive as possible. All of a sudden, your people have a purpose. If your purpose is just to make money and just to provide jobs, there's nothing wrong with making money. We all like money. I do. Every one of us does, and we all work. A good part of why we work, if not the most important reason, is because of money. We want to get paid. Nothing wrong with money. But if it's the only thing, then we're just hiring mercenaries. And that's what we expect, need to expect. But if we can give people a m more important purpose than just making money, if that's not the only thing, then we can help them see that their role is much bigger than just fixing a vehicle, than just sanding, than just painting, than just doing paperwork, than just signing people in and out, and, this not, and greater than just cleaning a car. It's creating this experience for this customer who's stressed and in need at that point. It changes things. All of a sudden, our people will go above and beyond. Take the time to work this through with your crew, with your company, with your organization. What is our purpose? If we cease to exist, why would we leave a hole? Why would it matter? Work this through and help your people understand what their purpose is. Our people aren't rats, and we're not rats, but like that rat in that tub of water, when we have hope, when we have a purpose, we can go a lot farther and we have a lot more energy and we'll put a lot more drive into what we're doing. And the same is true with the people we lead. The same is true with us. If we have a strong purpose, we'll continue going when everybody around us is stopping and giving up. So, good luck with this. Follow through. Do the two questions at the end of the chapter, again, like normal. But, take the time to work this through. First of all, on your own and then with the people that you lead so that everybody understands and has a very, very clear understanding of what your purpose is. All right, good luck, and we'll see you in Chapter 14.